section today, we're going to be looking at Trend Micro's custom defense portfolio and cover what that, uh, what that means. Ultimately, the, the custom defense uh, technology um, all centers around a few products called Deep Discovery. Uh, so Deep Discovery is an advanced malware detection uh, technology um, sold as appliances. So the, the most popular appliance is called the Deep Discovery Inspector, and that does network traffic analysis. So it's looking for suspicious communications as part of a, a compromise. So where a compromised endpoint that has, you know, it's been controlled by a, uh, a remote computer, um, maybe it's doing lateral movement on the network, maybe it's getting updates. There's certain uh, behaviors that we'll be looking for and we would highlight that. It also has integrated into it uh, sandboxing capability so it can actually analyze um, files that are sent across the network, etc. Um, and also delivered into the network over SMTP or web, etc. So, Today's going to be looking at the, the, the custom defense portfolio. Um, what's very important about this portfolio is, as so I talked about the Deep Discovery Inspector, we've got the, an anal, uh, the Analyzer, which is a uh, sandbox appliance for um, different Trend Micro products, like the email security products, the web security products, that can actually send files for analysis in the sandbox. Because as, as I mentioned yesterday, you know, Relying purely on AV signatures or reputations will result in compromised networks. You know, 95% of customers we put this technology into, we find malware they didn't know they had on the network, uh, compromised servers, compromised endpoints. Um, and that's the reality is, you know, traditional defenses are not 100% uh, protection against modern advanced malware that's uh, been delivered by very um, uh, focused groups who are trying to break into that specific organization. You know, traditional defenses work for that spray and pray type malware where there's no specific target. They just send it out via spam to loads of people, companies. Targeted attacks are very focused. You know, the attackers will do a lot of intelligence gathering um, on, you know, what the defenses are like on individual users. They will then target those individuals with terms of social engineering. They'll stand up brand new uh, infrastructure to do the attack. Uh, use a unique piece of malware or, uh, or uh, re-engineer the, the sample so it can't be detected by the uh, traditional defenses. Because traditional defenses are looking for known bad files. Okay? Now the problem with known bad is if you haven't seen it before, and when I say we, it's the entire security uh, industry, traditional AV products or anti-malware products on their own Will, re will result in compromised devices. You need to look at additional technology. There's multiple things you can do, and a lot of things I covered yesterday, things like application control, which can stop applications running, like malicious applications being installed. Um, but you need to be able to, you need to be able to look at things slightly differently in order to catch them. So the joy of sandboxing is it enables us to take a copy of the endpoint image, run that as lots of multiple machines on a client and then actually execute that file within that sandbox environment. So we can double click on that, uh, effectively double click on that file and see what it does and record all the uh, things it does to the machine. So does it write anything to memory? Does it write anything uh, uh, registry entry? Does it try and call out to anywhere? Does it try and pull down new files? Does it uh, uh, insert new services, etc.? So we're looking for all of those changes that happen on that um, that endpoint, and we record them, and based on its behavior, we'll give it a rating of you know, highly, um, highly suspicious or highly malicious down to you know, uh, safe, um, and there's lots of different categories we have. And the whole idea is to give um, customers the ability to block zero day. So the sandbox itself can, on email, will hold a file in, uh, in, on the mail server while that file is analyzed, and we can actually ascertain whether it's really malicious rather than waiting, looking at it purely from a signature perspective. We're just looking at, does that file match this pattern or uh, rule? So um, sandboxing on its own, though, still is not enough, because um, sometimes uh, the, the very clever bits of malware will use certain sandbox evasion techniques. So even, you know, even a sandbox is not 100%. So again, having the ability to uh, analyze network traffic means you can look to see if you know a compromised machine is still in existence. You might have 
you know, compromised machines that have uh, been compromised for years and years that are sitting, that are already on the network when this technology goes in. Then obviously you're not going to pick up anything on the sandbox there. But the network traffic analysis piece will look and using the fingerprinting technology will be able to ascertain whether there's some suspicious activity. So that's sort of the main elements. We've also got a, a solution called the endpoint sensor that will uh, think about it as sort of a, a black box flight recorder. Um, it will record any changes that happen on an endpoint. It would sit alongside an anti-malware solution, but it records any DNS lookups, any uh, file paths that exist, files have been deleted, uh, services that have been added, all of those things. So we can remotely query those to see if that machine was any, ever in a compromised state. Because often when you go and look um, for a compromised machine, the original file that did the compromising that maybe opened the back door on that machine has been cleaned up and deleted. So you're not going to find the original files. But if you've recorded all the changes that have happened uh, on that machine, you can see the attack flow and understand whether that has been compromised or not by looking for what we call indicators of compromise, IOCs that can be used on those endpoints. But the, so the, the custom defense portfolio is, is advanced malware detection tools, forensics tools, but then from the detections that it has, being able to enhance the existing products. And I'll show you how those work. So we can also, from here, centralize all of the detections. We can output to certain SIM solutions, so security information and event management solutions like uh, QRadar or HP ArcSight or Splunk. Um, to aid uh, forensics teams or SOC teams in terms of getting better visibility of what's going on on the network. Okay, so that's so that's as a summary. Um, what I'll do is just talk you through some of the components. So that's the whole portfolio, but we're going to focus on just a few um, today. So I will do a walkthrough of the interface of Deep Discovery Inspector and show you some uh, detections, so you can see um, how how these things work. So. What you've got here, um, say so the Deep Discovery portfolio, there's four product, four main products. You've got the Deep Discovery Inspector. That will look at all the network traffic coming in and out for malicious activity. It can also look at lateral movement, like east-west communication, and has integrated sandboxing. The Analyzer is a much bigger sandbox appliance. This has 33 sandboxes on it. Um, and you can cluster these in, in to increase performance. So they will analyze, one box will analyze about 10,000 samples per day. So generally it would be used with our email products like ScanMail or Instagram Messaging Security where suspicious files will be sent to the analyzer for analysis and then a result will be sent back and based on the, the value, um, whether it's good or bad, um, if it's good it will be forwarded onto the mail server, if it's bad it will be quarantined or deleted based on the policy. Um, we can also, from this sandbox information, we can create what we call suspicious object lists, which output to third-party gateways or our web gateway, for example. So if we saw a piece of malware executing, we would, uh, um, we would record its call-out addresses like IPs, URLs. Uh, if it was malicious, we'd then add that to the suspicious object list, and that would be automatically propagated out to the web gateway or maybe a Palo Alto gateway, uh, Cisco, uh, HP, um, IBM for example, Blue Coat, we can support all of those in terms of distributing automatic blacklists from the solution. So this is all about detecting unique activity on the customer's environment and enhancing the global threat information that comes from all customers down to the devices, enhancing it with local information that comes from the deep discovery piece. Then we've got the endpoint sensor, which sits on the endpoints recording any changes. Um, and we do have a, an inline uh, email appliance for the Deep Discovery email inspector. Uh, does what it says in the tin. Um, and that would be sandboxing in line with uh, over SMTP. Obviously, you can do it with the an analyzer and uh, in the Instagram messaging security gateway or, the, or scan mail. But some customers don't want to change these components. So therefore, putting an inline gateway um, for email uh, would, would cover that. So let's have a look at these in a bit more detail. Um, obviously yesterday we went through ScanMail, the web security solutions and the gateway, so I won't touch on those. Uh, control Manager we will touch on a little bit because this ties it all together. So all the detections come into Control Manager and then this will help propagate these 
uh, this information out. It also centralizes all of the detections from, you know, you might have multiple inspectors uh, due to, you know, multi-site organization, um, and you want to cover all the ingress, egress points um, within, that, uh, within that environment. Okay, so when we look at the inspector, one of the very important points around um, network traffic analysis is there are some other vendors out there that talk about protecting web and protecting email. Yes, they're very important, and they're often the initial compromise, but there's a lot of other ports that um, malicious uh, software uses. So Poison IV, a known exploit tool, you can see it uses 443 and port 80, which are known um, uh, suspicious, or so no web uh, protocols. One thing to note, obviously 443 being SSL, you need to make sure you can do SSL inspection. If you're using our web gate, you can uh, decrypt SSL communications and then check the payloads there. So, but just looking at web, you would miss all of these additional, obviously 8080s web, but all of these additional protocols would be would be missed, uh, or ports would be missed. Uh, um, and I think, it, you know, in terms of giving proper coverage around um, malicious activity, you've got to have a full visibility. Um, so when we talk about Deep Discovery Inspector, it's actually over over 80 different, it's over 100 different protocols now, um, but it covers all TCP and UTP ports. It's application aware, protocol aware for um, over 80 different protocols and applications. And the key thing here there is, you know, some applications will jump ports. So it's, it, it, it's able to understand what that protocol is, no matter what port number it comes over. Um, so it's very important when you're trying to ascertain whether you've got threat, uh, you know, malicious activity going on the, net, the network. It obviously uses all of our known threat information, our reputation databases and things, but it also is able to identify unknown threats using the sandboxing and also the uh, network traffic analysis, which will pick up the suspicious activity going on on that, uh, um, on that network and tie that to the initial attack. Um, evolving attacks, obviously, again, the network traffic inspection, as attacks evolve, you know, you'll have the initial compromise, often that'll be a very basic bit of software. Then they'll have software updates to uh, give it more capabilities. There'll be uh, command and control call-out traffic going on, so there'll be lateral movement, there'll be data exfiltration. So all of that will be um, will be uh, monitored and reported into the console. Um, and also coverage of uh, multiple OSs and different software capabilities, so, uh, looking for vulnerabilities that have, might be uh, utilized. Again, having a full coverage of that. If you don't, there's a lot of holes that can, uh, that are that, or gaps that are left within um, within the environment. And so, you know, the deep discovery inspector, just from a single appliance, can cover all of that. Sandboxing, it can cover the um, network traffic analysis. It can look for known and unknown threats. So it's a very, very a good solution against um, picking up. Uh, those, uh, those those malicious activity. So when we actually look at the when we actually look at the solution, um, as I say, the um, inspector is the most common because you know you want to have both sandbox capability and you want to have that visibility. Where we're looking at specific email solutions, obviously inline email can be done with the email inspector or with the uh, scan mail or IMSVA with the, the deep discovery analyzer, but Generally, the, inspect, the inspector is the one that goes in first because customers want to ascertain whether they have been compromised. And you know, as a partner, um, you know, you are, we would even enable you to have uh, uh, NFR boxes to maybe go and put these into customers' environments to see if they've got any compromise. It really helps um, the customer go and get budget when you can show them that they've got you know uh, malicious activity going on on the network they didn't realise they had. Um, you know, often. What people know doesn't hurt them, um, and that is often the case with um, uh, malicious files until they suddenly find that their corporate intellectual properties uh, uh, left the organization. You know, we've got some high value manufacturing customers where, you know, we've had Asian based competitors of theirs suddenly um, selling uh, the latest version of their solution, obviously under their, another brand because they've had their network compromised. Um, so. While I say what they don't know doesn't hurt them, actually it can, um, but it's often too late. Um, so from a single appliance, it does multiple things. So the Deep Discovery Inspector 
as I said, is a network scanning appliance. It sits out of band presently. Um, it starts, the smallest model is 100 megabits per second, and the biggest one going for 4 gigabits per second. If the customer needs more scanning throughput, we can use technologies like from Gigamon that can take, say, a 10 or 40 gig pipe and split it into multiple feeds, or, only, or filter out the protocols we wish to scan. Um, they are sold as a physical appliance or as a uh, virtual appliance. The only thing to note, when it's a virtual appliance, the sandboxing uh, doesn't work on the inspector. You have to use the analyzer to do the sandboxing for the, uh, the discovery inspector. So most people go for the, the hardware, um, but where you've got very large environments, it's sometimes more cost effective for the customers to use uh, the virtual appliance. When we talk about sandboxes, so the sandboxes are created by the customer themselves. We do provide uh, basic uh, XP, Windows 7, Windows 8 sandboxes, but it's better to have create a virtual image of the golden image of that customer. So when you get a detection, it's, it's, it's much more likely to uh, compromise that endpoint. Okay? And the customer can do that themselves. The, we're using Oracle VirtualBox as the uh, uh, hypervisor for the virtual machines in the, in the sandboxes. So you can just download a free version of the customer and can create a, um, a uh, OVA file of that, uh, of that specific image. Um, so it does network traffic analysis. Um, it also does, and it also looks at not only the traffic, but also the files themselves. So we'll do file emulation, so static code analysis, as well as um, actually um, running the file in the sandbox to see how it uh, appears. So we'll actually look at the code in the file to see if there's any anomalies, like maybe some spaces where we're trying to do a buffer overflow attack or a, a memory uh, um, heap spray into the, into the memory, sorry, shall I say. Um, we've got a lot of heuristics engines, fingerprinting engines to be able to detect strange things that are going on. We use correlation engines as well, so instead of just looking at each communication on its own, we might see, you know, every 30 minutes there's a communication to this IP address. Oh, and it jumps one port each time. So on its own, it might not look suspicious, but when you see that happening over a 24, 48-hour period, that's suspicious, and the correlation engines would also uh, pick, those, pick that up. And um, there's also all our traditional network and file reputation engines, certified, say, software engines, web reputation, email reputation, all of that is taken into account within this, uh, within this appliance. So it's a very, very thorough appliance. So it covers all TCP and UDP ports, and is application protocol aware for, well, I, I say, just over 100 now. I need to update the deck. So yeah, single client, so it does everything. Um, the only thing, obviously, this doesn't do is inline blocking. So if the customer does want inline blocking, well, there are some features like TCP reset capabilities, but you know, if you want inline blocking, they say the output from this de the detections can be sent to our web gateway, a blue coat uh, solution, um, Palo Alto, um, IBM, HP, etc. So you know, we can we can we can we can do the inline blocking via other other technologies. We do have, as I say, inline blocking for email, um, but for the um, inspector, it's it's different. So just to give help you visualize what's happening. So got a bad guy out here. He sent, let's say, an email to a target individual. So obviously SMTP traffic comes over the network. We are mirroring that traffic, so we will see that SMTP uh, stream. Um, obviously the payload, the payload can either be analyzed based on our ATSE engine. Basically it's a heuristics engine that will determine whether that file looks suspicious enough to forward. Or you can do it purely on file type. So we'll look at the true file type and say, right, we want to look at all office documents or all PDFs or all um, flash files, what have you, that come over the network, so, or all executable. So um, whether it's the ATS, the engine, or whether it was the um, uh, being done on file type, that file that was sent over SMTP that was delivered to the mail server, we uh, viewed it, we've run it in the sandbox, and we found that well, this is the hash value, um, this is an IP that it's talking out to, there's some URLs that it's talking out to. Because of the way that behaves, we have generated um, that hash value, those IPs and those URLs that can then be propagated out to um, another uh, solution. 
So we might be wanting to pro propagate those to our, our web proxy um, or to a third party a gateway to then block suspicious communication. So lateral movement, we'd be looking again, have, is this endpoint now doing things, port scanning, is it using administrative tools like uh, PSExec or WMI to um, try and do pass the hash and things like that within the network. So we're looking for communications like, are we seeing large um, database movements? Are we seeing failed logins to database servers? Um, so all of that information would be picked up and correlated here. So not only would we see the initial compromise, we then correlate that activity to the lateral movement. Then when we start to see command and control, command and control callback, well, um, again, we would see those communications trying to go out to these specific URLs. But because the web proxy now has updated its blacklist based on what the deep discovery applied, it can't actually talk out to that, uh, that address. So that's the power of that dynamic um, communication is that we can, we, can, we can block that on a trend or a third party solution as well. So that's the inspector. Um, now, in terms of credibility, and we obviously have quite a few uh, installations and very important customers. We can't really talk about those because of the nature of the technology. But um, a third party uh, company called NSS Labs, they're a proper testing house that don't, we can't pay them to do a test on our behalf. They do their, I suppose, their uh, business model is to do the test and sell the test results to customers. Um, but they did a, a breach detection test um, against us and many other big vendors out there, Cisco Sourcefire, Fortinet. Uh, FireEye, and we came out top in the detection capabilities and the second lowest in terms of total cost of ownership. So not only did we have the best detection, we were also one of the most uh, well-priced from a customer perspective. So that's a good, uh, a nice test to have. They'll be doing another one soon, but it just highlights actually that this technology is, is very good at what it does. Um, and this just highlights some of the, the, the different uh, analysis we do. So Dr. Emulation, static code analysis. Um, then we have the virtual analyzer, which actually uh, looks for uh, create um, environments that files will uh, detonate in, and then there's some basic blocking with the TCP resets, DNS spoofing, etc. But better if you output to a <coughs> third-party appliance to be able to do the blocking in that. Okay. So I will show you the console in a bit, but this just gives you some examples of what uh, what you might see. So here you might see, well, 40 hosts have made callback attempts, um, and then you can drill down to have a look and say, okay, well, this is the IP that's been making these callback attempts. We've seen these detections. Um, from the de detections, we've also seen there was a virtual analyzer detection. Um, and from here, we can start to see some of the things that it did. Okay, well, um, it contained an exploit code in the document. Um, it deleted this file. It dropped this additional executable. It put this auto run in the registry. Um, for that executable, executable that had been dropped. Um, it also tried to uh, connect out to this IP on this port number, and all of that is, is gathered by the, by the appliance during, the, um, uh, during its anal analysis. Okay. One of the other important things to note on Deep Discovery Inspector is the uh, threat connect. So anything we find you can have a, you can look it up in our smart protection network. So you know, if we have a connect, connection, GhostNet TCP connection, you can click on that and it will take you straight out to Threat Connect, which is basically a web portal that enables you to access all of our global threat information. So you can see GhostNet here, um, all of the associated IP addresses, the malware samples associated with the URLs and domains that are associated with that. You can see you know potential damage, the prevalency of it what countries it's in, what groups are behind it, and you can drill down. So if you want to have a look at the IPs, you could then drill down into each one. You can get who is information behind the domain registration. So it's a really good way of uh, getting much better understanding of what is potentially, um, who is potentially attacking your environment and, and getting access to their known command and control information, the types of malware they might use to be able to enhance your defenses to protect yourself or protect the customer. So, that's very, very powerful from, uh, from that regard. And often, 
you know, I, I, this for me is much of a, it's quite, it's a newer, new technology that not, not every customer is considering if they don't even know they need it in some cases, they still believe they're safe for their traditional defenses. So um, <clears throat> what I try and sometimes cover off is, you know, if, if they're not willing to do a POC to show it is to try and help them um, generate awareness within the organization to, gener to, to generate budget that, you know, the change in the data protection app that's coming with the, with the draft EU general data protection regulation the fine levels are going to go from half a million pounds to 5% of global turnover or 100 million euros, whichever is highest. There's forced disclosure of data breaches within 72 hours. So, you know, the brand damage associated with that is huge. So this is, these are major changes that should, um, should help customers um, start looking from the board um, in terms of the technologies they really need to be investing in. You know, obviously things like encryption and DLP can help the users, but you also need to keep the bad guys out. And if they do get in, you need to quickly discover them. So these are always a good one to help customers look at how do they justify the budget uh, to cover something like this. So that was the inspector. So the deep discovery analyzer. So as we talked about earlier, we've got, when we start to talk about how, how the analyzer is used, so first of all, a payload would come in. So either to the IMSVA or scan mail, we can we can do either when that when that email is delivered to the gateway or to the mail server with scan mail we'll actually hold that file in quarantine we'll send that over to the analyzer for analysis and then based on the result that's sent back it will either forward it or it will delete it um, or quarantine it depending on what the the value is off the back of that as well because of the information we just we managed to get from the sandbox we will then propagate out uh, blacklist to the gateways as well. So this can do the inline blocking that I talked about using that analyzer. And I say analyzer can also be used for deep discovery inspectors where you don't have enough, um, uh, you don't, you want to virtualize them and, or don't have enough sandboxes on the on the inspectors themselves. Okay. So that just shows obviously blocking blocking that. Um, one other thing we are. Uh, adding in in May is the ability to also um, output to our endpoints. So Office Scan, um, at the moment, it relies on signatures from our global uh, threat database. In May, what will happen is the uh, analyzer with Control Manager will create um, a signature and a cleanup template. So obviously, it knows what it's going to do when it executes, knows what files it installs. And that will then be propagated down to the endpoint. So not only can it um, remove um, the malicious files associated with that compromise, um, it can also stop further infections on other devices because that signature is being propagated. And then more importantly is adding containment capabilities. So the ability to say, right, this machine is compromised. Um, we want to take it off the network but only allow certain IPs to talk to it, so maybe the security operations center can get access to that machine um, while uh, to, to, to have a look at, understand what's going on, clean it, and then allow that back onto the network. So this piece is very important. So it's not only just dealing with the, the gateway technology and the mail technology, but also from an endpoint perspective, enhancing, enhancing those with the detection that are, that are found. Okay. Um, so this just gives you a view of the uh, uh, other capabilities within the product. So the email inspector is the one I really wanted to highlight. This is an inline uh, mail transfer agent or gateway, um, or it can be done in uh, line carbon copy mode as well if you just want to, to monitor emails. But if you are going to implement an email solution, you're better to do it in line. The inline, you know, the delays are very very small. You're looking at about a 60 to 90 second analysis time in the sandbox. So um, it's definitely worth uh, worth having. Okay, and then the detections which we've already shown you here. So let's just skip out of that. So the endpoint sensor. So I so say the endpoint sensor itself is there to um, look at um, specific things that um, may happen on that endpoint. So you can, while you might have a sandbox execution, what you don't, what you can't tell, is whether that machine that was delivered that malicious file actually had a compromise or not. So this allows you to query, so there's a centralized management server, which can be done through Control Manager as well. You can query, say, does this registry entry exist? 
did, did any of any machines pull out to this uh, IP or to this URL? Um, did this file path ever exist? Uh, does this process exist? So you can look at those and and then uh, query the entire endpoint estate and ascertain which ones you need to um, clean. And then, based on those of the compromise, you can then contain them and then deal with them uh, when you need to. So this gives you an example here of the processes that happen. So this is a table view, but you can also get uh, an exploded view as well. So here you can see it was a um, Acrobat um, file or an Adobe file was um, sorry, and a PDF came in uh, over. It was delivered to Outlook. An Acrobat reader opened it. Um, from there, it created various uh, things. So it's created this temp file. Um, it pulled down this additional uh, file from this uh, URL. Um, and talked out to these command and control servers. So you can see the exploded view of exactly what happened when that compromise uh, took place and all of the associated uh, information um, that occurred on it. Um, and this is how you would query. So you can query on suspicious, uh, suspicious objects. So it might be keywords or uh, uh, paths. So do these file paths exist? Do these hashes exist on the machine? Did an IP or port number uh, was an IP pulled out to? Um, are there any other um, uh, are there any other information that you want to search on on that endpoint? So there's lots of lots of different things you can you can do within that uh, with that Venom console, and that will query all of the machines that it's connected to on that environment. So you can start to say, say tab your exploded view of what's happened. Um, I mean, here you can see that you know scan of 2,200 endpoints, um, three were found to be risky in this scan. Um, and four hundred forty still waiting, but you know that's but you're looking at about twenty minutes to do ten thousand endpoints with the solution. So it's uh, it's reasonably quick compared to trying to do this manually. Okay. So I think that probably covers enough from a presentation perspective. So what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the uh, at the console now. So um, again, as before, finish now. Good. So here I've, uh, I've this is a, again a hosted deep discovery inspector. What I've done is um, the uh, let me just read I need to re-log in. Let's just see if we can. Yeah, okay, perfect. So um, what we've done this is this is virtualized, and I've just run some pcaps uh, through it with some malicious um, files and, uh, and things in there. So you'll suddenly see a big jump in activity. But this basically gives you a dashboard view of profiles that are being scanned, uh, malicious uh, um, detections that we've seen. Um, all of these are, you can you can uh, click on to be able to drill down into more information. Um, and here I can see an overview of all of the you know critical things that have happened on the, on the network. So it might be I want to have a look at well there's 13 detections from this IP address here. So well, let's have a look and see what's uh, see what's going on here. And I can also see, because I can buy the network subnets, I can also start to look at what the group of individuals. So I can see here well, that I've got quite a few detections. So I've had some poison ivy uh, TCP responses. So there's some exploit tools have been uh, detected. Um, I can see that there's a known detection for a poison ivy backdoor. Um, there's some Java content that's been downloaded. So I can also see that we've had some web reputation detections to a suspicious URL. So let's have a quick look at um, this detection here. So I can then drill down and start to see, well, of the four detections, what's the information I have on them? So um, these are the different times of day. And I can click into each one, and it'll give me the, the information associated with it. I can see that the it was an inbound communication from this IP. Um, this was the port, it was over SSL. Um, I can see this was the, the intended uh, target. And I can also look at the detection rules. So we have thousands of rules that are in here, but the detection rule ID was 563, and you can go to the console and then find out what that's, what, more information on that. And you know I said about Threat Connect. So here we can see there's a, a hyperlink uh, to the detection name. So if I wanted to, I can click on here, 
and hopefully this environment's got internet access. This will then open up Threat Connect um, within um, that relates to that information, and from here I can then um, see further information about that specific protection. So this is this is the Threat Connect interface. So I can see there's some. Uh, this is a known um, IP for uh, poison ivy uh, exploits. Um, we can see that these, that this, these malware or file hashes or um, malware has been delivered by this exploit. Okay. I can then start to, so if I want to start to see information about it, so I can see, well, what are the uh, types of malware that have been seen? Well, this Trojan here has been delivered by that, by that site. Oh, that's a bit slow. Hold on. Scroll down a little more. Get there. So I can see what does it do, um, what are the concerns that I need to worry about. I can start to look at view, uh, view the reports associated with it. So I can see the geographical uh, spread of it. So you can see it's been seen 13 times in Canada. Oh, there's some Poland and Hungary. It's been seen five times in Hungary. In Japan, we've seen it five times. So this gives us information relating to uh, where these detections have come from. So obviously, the, for the UK, we have no detections of this specific variant. Um, and you can view, there's a lot of information you can drill into. So um, sometimes you'll have, okay, this is an IP. Um, you can start to see um, information relating to um, malicious files that are associated with it, other IPs that are associated with it, and you can drill down into those. So if we have a look at this, let's view this report here. So this will open up a specific page on that variant, and you can get more information from it. So it's, it's a very, very powerful. So you can start to see the overview. You can say, well, this is quite rare. Um, there's only uh, one to 100 instances we've seen. Um, we can start to see you know, when, we, when we first saw it, um, what are the types of industries that have been targeted by this piece of malware, um, what the uh, registry settings that it uh, puts in, all the other things. From a memory injection perspective, what's the mutex um, of the uh, for the for the memory um, uh, pattern uh, scanning and so on? So um, hopefully that that shows how useful that can be. So every detection we get in here, we can get better understanding of what's uh, what's going on. Okay. So um, let's just go out of this now. We'll not go out, but just go back to the main screen. So I'm just going to click on top threats here. This is a very useful tab uh, to, to look at. So this will give you um, a view of the last 24 hours of those IPs which are um, most, uh, most at risk. So we've had a look at this one here. But let's say top malware infected hosts, this one is showing first. You want to have a look at this one first. So you can click on here. This will then show you the detections associated with that. So we can see that we have a um, Alina HTTP request, um, and we can start to see the connection details associated with that. And again, if you wanted to, this you'll notice this is an outbound um, HTTP response. So this is going to uh, a likely um, command and control location. And you'll see here attack phase, command and control communication, uh, it gives you that more more information. This is the URL that it's using to connect out to, um, and obviously you can then get the global threat information around what's that, what's going on. So we can definitely say that that <coughs> specific endpoint is talking to a known command and control location, and therefore needs to be uh, needs to be uh, dealt with. And so here you can start to see more information on here. If I wanted to, if I click on well, click on this one here. It gives me more information associated with that detection, and then here I can then drill down into, you know, what's the um, information we know about that one, and any other related information. So we can start to see, well, okay, this malware family, there's lots of different files. Um, there's certain domains that are being used by this um, this specific uh, malware family, um, associated IPs, which might be malware delivery and URLs are also used. So you can drill down into each one of these. Um, by just clicking on them and getting all the information. So you might want actually to take information from this and then input that into a gateway because you want to have all the associated IPs that 
uh, could be used as part of this attack added to added to that interface. Okay. So um, let's have a look at the um, go back to the dashboard here. So hopefully, what I'll do is just go back to <coughs> top infected hosts. Let's do, see if we've got a, an actual execution virtual analyzer. Yeah. Okay, so here is our. This, so here I can see where we've had um, uh, detections in the virtual analyzer. So here, let's have a look. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, let's have a look at this detection here. So this is the file name was called Interesting Photo. It was sent to this IP, um, and we can start to see that we've had you know, got malicious content and real time detections. So let's have a look at this. So we can see that it was downloaded <coughs> over HTTP uh, from this IP address. Um, the URL um, was this one here. Last year, so it's an internal testing IP. Um, <coughs> and then we want to let's have a look at the associated file on that. So that's the connection details associated with the detection. And here we can see that um, this is the detection name. So we can see. There was the Windows 7 sandbox that um, uh, found that uh, it was malicious. And red means it's, it's, it's definitely malicious. Um, here's the hash values. If you want to use those into a gateway, you can either download the parent file or the report associated with that. And then here we can see information on what actually um, what actually this malware did. There's, there's not much detail in here, but um, we can see that it was malformed or defective in no malware traits. So it's actually been a detection for um, this um, Mac OS 10 um, malware. And if we had, so let's just go and find a, a better one that's going to be a bit more information. So we've got an Android detection here. I don't think that's going to do it. Okay, no, so we haven't actually, the, the PCAPs I've played haven't actually done any um, virtual analyzer detections, but that one I just showed you there, when you actually go to the file analysis results, it gives you all of the um, behavior um, that's been seen when it executed. And obviously, again, with the Android one, um, we're not going to see, um, we're not going to see the, uh, the file analysis results because we don't have an Android, um, <coughs> um, we don't have an Android sandbox on the on the appliance. So at the moment we support Windows XP, Windows 7, uh, Windows 8. Um, actually, the latest version also supports Server 2003, 2008 as well. Um, we're soon adding Mac OS support, but that will be via a cloud sandbox. And the um, Android sandbox is a manual um, sandbox that you can upload a file to. So hopefully that gives you a good view of things. Now, in, under detections here, we have um, <coughs> we have. You can then you can do uh, a view of past 24 hours, past seven hours uh, for detection. Under the custom detections, what I'll just show you, show you the suspicious object list. So the su suspicious object list is the um, list of associated um, URLs or IPs that we've seen um, within the detections we've seen. So these are automatically added here, and then these suspicious objects can then be used to be pushed out to third-party devices. And if I wanted to, I could add this to the deny list, um, and then this would, um, from a monitor-only perspective, would do a detection if we see anything, but I could also do the attempt to reset. So the actual peak discovery appliance itself would try and do a TCP reset on that specific um, suspicious object. Okay. So um, I mean, I think yeah, there's, a, there's obviously a lot of configurations that we can do. So if I go into global settings here, I'll just show you some of the rules. So uh, actually, it's not into that. Some of our detection settings. 
So when I talked about those rules in the um, under each detection, this is a list of all the rules we use. Um, so you can go in here, you can turn them on and off, um, but it gives you a bit more information as to what that rule is. And I mean, I said there's thousands of different rules we're using. Um, so these will be different fingerprinting rules. There's some correlation rules in the back end as well, which are also making decisions. But this gives you a view all of the um, ways we're detecting uh, thing, uh, detecting um, the um, malicious activity and, and, and files, etc. Um, and then we've got different um, things we can turn on. So we've got web reputation. We've got certified safe software we can turn on. We've got retro scan. So retro scan is the ability to, um, if you've got um, logs, or basically logs all DNS lookups, and then anything we find to be suspicious later on, obviously that can pop up and say, right, there's a couple of machines that have all have talked to this over the last couple of weeks um, before you determine that this was a malicious location. So RetroScan is a very nice way of being able to have that visibility. Um, there's an awful lot of capability within the, within the solution. So say for the uh, uh, analyzer, this is just a sandbox um, appliance. So within here, you would it, you upload your, your virtual appliances. Um, Your virtual images, so should I say? Uh, I can't remember what the password is for that. Um, but hopefully that's given you some insight. I'd say um, if you do want a more detailed sort of uh, view of the the products, or would like to demo the products, um, you can uh, let myself know or um, E92, know your account manager E92. So I'll just put up my email address there. So if you've got any further questions. Um, let me know. I'm happy to do a separate WebEx and discuss discuss things with you. But alternatively, if so, you can speak to um, E92. Uh, I'm just going to see if there's any questions in the question window or the chat window. Okay, there appears to be. Yeah, doesn't appear to be any uh, questions. So um, I would like to say thank you very much for joining today. I hope you found that useful and. Um, have a very good weekend and speak to you all soon. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.